What is up, everybody? Today is such a good day for y'all to join us here in the park because we've got lots of fun things planned. This summer, we've been talking about faith, and faith is trusting in what we can't see because of what we can see. Now, for example, we can put our faith in Jesus even though we can't see him. We can trust in God and how much he loves us and that he sent Jesus to be our savior. Now, speaking of things we can see, I brought my phone with me just in case I land some super awesome tricks, but nobody believes me because they didn't see it with their own eyes. Actually, I've got a fun game we can play to see how good you guys are at guessing. But first, I need Grace to join me on stage. Hi, Grace. Hi. Um, can anyone tell me what mode of transportation she is? Well, it's, it's kind of hard to see her from all the way down there. I wish we had a bird's eye view. My phone. This is awesome. Now, can anyone tell me what she looks like? So, someone say a jetpack? I think you're right. I think jetpack, that, oh, that's right. Thank you, Grace. You're welcome. Okay. Now, here is where you all come in, where I need three leaders for the first two rounds of this game to join me up on stage. Let's see. Leaders. <laughs> Mom, you wanna go? Gotta be a leader, sorry, buddy. You know. Do you wanna go? Do you wanna come up? <laughs> okay, we're gonna play multiple rounds so there'll be more opportunities. Okay. Do you want to come up or no? <laughs> okay. So we have our first three leaders. What is your name? Paul. Paul. Everyone say hi, Paul. Hi, Paul. Paul. What's your name? Autumn. Everyone say hi, Autumn. Hi, Autumn. And your name? Dana. Everyone say hi, Dana. Okay. So here's how this works. Our lovely leaders up here are going to work together to form or transform into a particular mode of transportation. And you guys are going to try to guess what type of transportation they are. Okay? Each round is going to be one minute, and these three leaders are going to do two rounds, and then we'll switch out. <laughs> together. Together. You guys have one minute, starting now. Okay, you guys, any guesses so far? I don't really know what they're doing yet. Not quite. Let's see. <laughs> Anyone? Close. Scooter? Did I hear scooter? That's right. It's a scooter. Good job, guy. Guys, okay. Round two, you guys ready? You guys ready? Okay. One minute. This one's a little bit harder. Just think about it. Any guesses? A hot air balloon. Good job. You guys are good at this. Okay. Good job, guys. Good job, guys. You guys can have a seat. Thank you so much. Now I need three more leaders. <laughs> Do you want to come up? Do you want to come up? Do you want to come up? <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, what's your name? Katie. You want to say hi, Katie? Okay. Kara. Everyone say hi, Kara. Hi. Laura. And Laura. Everyone say hi, Laura. Okay, so I think you guys know the drill now, right? Round three. You guys ready? It's a boat. It's a boat. Yeah, we gotta do it. Oh, we love this. This is what we have to do. Oh my god. Okay. One minute. Any guesses? They got it. Helicopter, you were right. 
They got it. They got it. You guys were good. Okay. It was a helicopter. <laughs> See, like. Yep, they got it. You guys ready? I know. They're good at this. <laughs> okay, now round four. You guys ready? Your guesses? Airplane. See, you guys are too good at this. Okay, thank you, leaders. You guys can. We need. Okay, we need our last set of three leaders. Anyone? Um. You don't want to. Let's see if I can find three more. Um. You might have to. Let's see. Do you want to come up? Um, I need two more. Let's see. Where did? Come up. Do you want to come up? I promise it's not as bad as you think. <laughs> okay, our last set of leaders. Okay, guys. What's your name? Kathy. I'm going to say hi, Kathy. What's your name? Lily. I'm going to say hi, Lily. Zion. We're gonna say hi, Zion. <laughs> Got quite the fan club. Okay, so our last two rounds. Are you guys ready? You guys are doing great so far. Let's keep it up. Okay. You guys, see it? One minute. Are you guys ready to start guessing? I gotta let them start going first. They already said boat. Well, good job, guys. And our last round. <laughs> you guys are too good at this, see? We should like make them go backstage or something. Well, that was awesome. You all can move on back to your seats. Thank you, okay. Now we put these away. Thanks for moving on back to your seats. <laughs> Get it? Because our theme is ready, set, move. <laughs> Anyways, now we can move on into some amazing worship. This is our last week with our June memory verse, and I'm curious if any of you have remembered it. Does anyone know what our memory verse this month is? Do you think you know? Let's see. Got it? Hebrews 11.1. 1. Look at that. That is awesome. That is correct. Good job, guys. Okay. Hebrews 11.1 1 tells us that faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. Now, let's all say that together so that we can remember to always have confidence in our Lord and put our faith in Jesus. Are you guys ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Great job, guys. Well, like I said earlier, I'm here to worship with you all, but what's one way we do worship, we worship here in the park? Offering, that's right. So when we make an offering, we are giving back a portion of everything that God has given us. And by making an offering each week, we are showing God that we love and trust him with everything we have, including our money. Now can I get two amazing helpers to assist me with offering today? Do you wanna come? Got it. You can't do both. There you go, okay. Now, if you have offering, raise your hand nice and high, and these lovely helpers will come and assist you. Thank you. Look, it looks like there's a hand back there. There's a hand back there. There we go, and one up here. Perfect. One, I think. Oh, one hand right there, and a hand right there. There we go. Oh, back there. Oh, and up front. There we go. Okay. Oh, we still got one more. Okay, I, I think that is everyone. Thank you so much. Let's give our awesome helpers a round of applause. You know what that song means. It's time for worship. So I'm gonna need two lovely singers and dancers to help me rock out to this song. Let's see, you wanna come up? You wanna come up? You're very excited, okay. You can pick a side, there you go. So what's your name? You can say into the mic. Amari. Hello, Amari. Everyone say hi, Amari. Hi. Hello, okay, and over here, who do we have? Nora. Everyone say hi, Nora. Hi, Nora. Okay, you guys know how we get worship started here in the park. We count to three and say hit it, Booth. Are you ready? Yeah. Ready? One, two, three. Hit it, Booth. Okay, we're going to start with some clapping. I love it, guys. I'm loving the energy already.
guys are doing amazing. I love it. Now strum that guitar. Rock stars out there. Shake the ground. We're shouting it loud. Broadcast. Because he is so good. Guys are clapping, I love it. Awesome job, let's see some clapping. Shake the ground again. Our God reigns. Broadcast. Job. Hey guys, are you ready to scream our God is good? It's coming. I want to hear you. Our God is good. Yes. Our God is good. Our God is good. Our God is good. Now dance like crazy because we love God, right? Yes. Whew. And we're shake the ground. Spin around. Let's go, guys. Our God is good all over the earth. Our God is good. Our God is good. Our God is good. <sighs> Great job, everyone. That was awesome. Okay, thank you guys so much. High five, high five, high five. That was incredible. It took a lot of faith for you guys to give it your all in your singing and dancing. Now, you know it's time for us to get the story started, but before we do, let's check in with our friends MC Haggis and Seamus McFamous and see what they've been learning about faith. Check this out. Oh, hello there. Uh, I'm MC Huggis, world's greatest Scottish rapper. And this year is my beatboxing partner, Seamus McFamous. Say hi to him, Seamus. Hi. <laughs> uh, this month we're all about faith. Trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. <laughs> you know, uh, me and Seamus were talking earlier about something that we can't see. Uh, do you remember what that was, Seamus? Uh, yeah, yeah, we were talking about fast drying super glue, and we decided that we didn't believe that it's as fast drying as they say it is, right, James? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I, yeah. Well, we believe in glue that you can see when you need to fix broken stuff. Hey, hey! Good old McElmers, right? Yeah, hey. yeah. You put that on something, and you can see it. You, you can watch it dry if you had that kind of time on your hands. <laughs> 
Anywho, me and Jameis didn't have faith that this super glue that you can't see is as fast as drying as they say it is. So I suggested that we do what a scientist would do when facing such a challenge. Let's glue our hands together. <laughs> so we did. And look, I still don't uh, see the glue, but I definitely see that our hands are glued together. I... No, I think we should uh, uh, get our hands unglued. I, I read that there's something that you can use to get your super glue off your skin. What, what, what was it? It was something that you could put on a pizza? Hey. No, not marshmallows. Hey. No, not gummy bears. Hey. No, peanut butter. No, that's ridiculous. No, oh, wait. It's ketchup. We could use ketchup. And I always keep a squeeze bottle near me. Woo! All right, we can spray this on our hands. Oh, but first, let's rap about faith, huh? Kick it! I can't see the air, but I know I breathe. I can't see the wind, but it moves the trees. I can't see glue, but our hands are epoxied. That's believing in something you can't see because of what you can see. And that's called face word. <laughs> yeah. Hey. All right, and now, uh, <clears throat> let's try to unglue our hands. Here we go. And we just gently, <laughs> just like that. Oh, don't. No, 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 no. <laughs> Wasn't ketchup. <laughs> now, nah, well, all I want is a plate of French fries. Huh? Oh, lovely. You and your French fries. Oop. <laughs> Did you wash your hands? Good morning, everyone. Is everyone awake this morning? Yeah. Oh, man, I don't think you're awake. Are you awake this morning? Yeah. All right, very good. Well, I am so excited to be in the park here as we continue to talk about God's big story in the Bible. And today, we're talking about the book of Acts. Now, the book of Acts is an amazing book because God does so many amazing things through the early church, the first church that started just a few years after Jesus died. He rose again from the grave, and then he went up into heaven. So this guy right here on my shoulder is named King Herod. And King Herod, he ruled over the land of Judea. That's right. My name's King Herod, and I work for the Roman government. We're in charge of all the Jewish people in the land of Judea. And well, I like it when the Jewish people like me, so I'm thinking about putting some of those Christians, those Jesus followers, into prison. In fact, P.S., I've already done it. Hmm. Hey, wait a second. I've got an idea. Just, just a minute. I need to think. Now, this is crazy because Herod, he decided to put Peter into prison. So Peter, I'm really sorry, but um, Herod just threw you in prison. That's right, guards, arrest him right now and throw Peter into prison. Oh yeah, try to get those shackles off your hands, Peter Parker. Huh? Oh, it's a Spider-Man reference. Well, I mean, they, they are made of plastic. So. Oh, don't ruin it for the kids, Lila. Uh, all right, King Herod, I think we've had just about enough of you. There we go. You know what? The thing was, you might not know this, but Peter and many other followers of Jesus, they had already been arrested once sometime earlier. Uh, I was innocent, I swear. You see, they were arrested, 
And do you know what? This was, this was kind of crazy because God miraculously got them out of prison. It was a miracle. And then after that, all of a sudden they appeared right in the temple courts in front of all the leaders of the Roman government. So Herod said, you know what? I'm going to make sure this doesn't happen again. I'm going to put Peter in prison, and I'm going to make sure we have some guards that are right next to him, make sure he doesn't escape. So here's what I need. I need someone who's really tough, who will not let Peter out of jail, somebody who can be a guard up here, all right, right here. What's your name? Gage. Gage, come on up on stage. You're going to stand right here on this side of Peter. And one more person. How about right here? What's your name? Sutton. Sutton, all right. Come on up here, Sutton. Right here on this side of Peter. All right. And we've got a nice uh, helmet here. Nice guard helmet. Here you go, Gage. All right, now, we got to make sure that you look really scary and tough. So give me your meanest face <laughs> to the crowd. There we go. All right, now cross those hands. Yeah, there we go. Awesome. All right, very good. Now, Herod had this plan. So Herod, he was going to make this big public trial for Peter. And he was going to do it the day after the Passover festival. But there were many followers of Jesus that knew Peter was in prison and they were praying for him. How many people have ever prayed here before? Has anyone ever prayed to Jesus? And when you pray... Like, how do you think it looks oftentimes? What do we do? Do you close your eyes? Yeah, we close our eyes so we can help focus on Jesus. Does anyone fold their hands? Sometimes that helps us distract from your hands going everywhere, right? So let's all do that right now. All right? Because that is exactly what the church was doing back then. They were all praying together for their friend Peter, who was in prison. Well, it was the night before the Passover, or the, the next night, it was going to be the big public trial. And so Peter, he went to sleep that night. All right, Peter. Let's go ahead and get in our nice, cozy prison bed. All right. We've got a nice pillow there. Does this look cozy to you all? I guess it shouldn't look that cozy if it's a prison bed, right? Yeah. All right, let's see. All right, Peter's getting tucked in. Peter wants to get a really good night's sleep. I'm sure it'll be a little hard to sleep, but I think he can do it. Are you Wait, cold? wait, I, I can't sleep without my lovey. Lovey? What? Yeah, yeah, everyone has a lovey, right? Hold on. Where's, does, where's mine? Does everyone have here? a lovey? Yeah. Doesn't everyone have one? Oh, yeah, here he is. This is Mr. Willie Sheep McSnuffles, and I can't sleep without him. I love him so incredibly Mr. much. Mr. Willie Sheep McSnuffles? Yeah. What? Who See in you. the world? I mean, all right, I guess I have to admit that when I was little, I did have a little bit of a lovey when I slept. Maybe I still do have it. No, no. Anyways, listen. The important thing, back to the story, is all of a sudden, when Peter was asleep, an angel of the Lord appeared. (laughs) 
there was a bright light that shone right in the prison cell. And the angel went right in, right past the guards they didn't even know. And he, he actually gave Peter a little kick to wake him up. Quick, get up. Ow! Oh, that, was, that really hurt. I, I, barely, I barely touched you. Well, that was way harder than we rehearsed. Oh, stop it, you big baby. You know I'm lactose intolerant. That, that, that doesn't even relate. Just get up. <laughs> well, right after the angel said that, Peter's shackles on his hands, they just dropped to the ground. They came right off of him. And then Peter followed the angel right out of the prison cell. All right, so Peter and Angel, why don't you start walking in place? Now, Peter, he couldn't believe this. I mean, was this even real? Was it a dream? What do you think? Was it real or was it a dream? Real? Real. Or a dream? It was really happening. The angel led Peter right past the guards. They didn't even know. And right out of the city, they went into the big city gate with big iron doors. And do you know what? Those iron doors opened themselves right up. It was amazing. They walked a little bit further, and then the angel was gone. Oh, bye. He left. All right. Well, let's give a big round of applause for our guards. You all did a great job. All right, you can have a seat. Thank you so much. Well, Peter realized this isn't just a dream. This really happened. So this is what Peter said. Now I know for sure that the Lord has sent his angel. He sent me free from Herod's power. Wow. You know what? Peter heard. Peter heard about all these people who were praying. And the Bible says that all these people were praying at a lady named Mary's house. Remember? Remember how praying looks? They were all praying and they were all like really, really, really asking Jesus with all their heart to help their friend Peter. Well, Peter went to Mary's house and he knocked on the door. He knocked on the door and a servant went to the door named Rhoda. I'm coming, I'm coming, hold your horses. Hello, anyone home? Well. Rhoda heard Peter's voice. And Rhoda was like, no way, that's Peter. And she got so excited that she didn't even answer the door. She just started telling everybody it was Peter. Guys, Peter is at the door. Oh, and everyone was like, no way, he's in prison. Hey, wait, you all can help me, say that. No way, he's in prison, no way. No guys, seriously, it's Peter. I know his voice and his knock. It always sounds like this song. Listen. Does anyone know what song I'm talking about? You guys got it, that is correct. Well, Rhoda kept saying to all of the followers of Jesus right there, it's true, it's true, it's really true. And Peter kept knocking and knocking. Finally, the people opened up the door and there was Peter. And Peter was so excited to tell them about the amazing things that God had done. Guys, you will not believe this. I was in prison, and then an angel of the Lord appeared out of nowhere and set me free. It was the most amazing thing. Come on, we have to tell everybody about this. Wow. I bet when Peter was in prison, I bet he felt so stuck. 
Has anyone here ever felt stuck before? I, I know I felt stuck. Where maybe like we're in the middle of something and we don't feel like we can get out. We don't feel like we can do any better. But do you know what? Peter realized that even though he was in a really hard spot, even though Peter was stuck and he didn't know how to get out, do you think he knew that God was with him? I think he did. You see, that is so important for us to remember. It's so important. It's our bottom line today. And I want you to say it with me on the count of three. God is with you even when you feel stuck. So on the count of three, one, two, three. God is with you even when you feel stuck. That is right. That is so important. And when Peter was stuck, what is the most powerful thing? The most powerful thing that people could have done when Peter was stuck. Pray. Pray. That is right. Because do you think that we're stronger or do you think God is stronger. God is way stronger. So that's why it's so important for us to pray. And we really need to pray when we're stuck or when we have a friend that's stuck or a family member that's stuck. And do you know what is even more powerful than when you pray? It's when you pray together. That is so powerful, and that's what we even see in the book of Acts. The whole church was praying together, and God did some things that nobody expected. I mean, think about it. When they saw Peter at Mary's house, they didn't even believe it was him. Because that's how powerful God works when we pray together to him. I mean, maybe you might feel stuck when you get really angry at your brother or sister, or maybe one of your friends, they did something to make you really angry. And you feel like, there's no way I'm ever not going to be angry at this person. Has anyone ever felt like that? I know I have. I've gotten really angry. I've gotten stuck there before. Or maybe your parents tell you something that you really don't want to do. And you don't know how you're ever going to listen to them. Is that, have you ever felt like that? Yeah. Well, when we're in these times, we need to pray. Because God is much stronger than us. So we actually get to do that. And you get to do that this morning in your small groups. You can pray together and you get to see what God does. It is such a cool thing. In fact, we can even do it right now. So let's go ahead and pray. Dear Father, we thank you so much that you are the God who is always with us when we're stuck. When we feel like we're stuck and we can't get out, Jesus, we thank you that you are always there. Jesus, we pray for the people in this room right now who might be stuck in anger or maybe they're stuck um, with money or maybe they're stuck um, in, in doing stuff we, knew that we know that we're not supposed to do. Jesus, we pray that you would help each and every one of us to know that you're with us and to free us with your power and help us to keep praying to never give up praying and talking to you, especially when we do it together. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.